Greg, this is your song. Why, why is this your opening song, Greg? Because I want to win, baby. Win, win, win. That's <laughs> it. Put your hands in the air. Make the stare there. And I want to win, baby. Yeah, I, <laughs> I love, love win. that. Yeah. So this this is a, this is a winning song, right? You know, when was the first time you listened to this song, Greg? Oh my gosh, I think it was 2000 and like 11, 2012. And then when I had my first event, right? I just started calling people winners. Yes. It's just like everyone's like, hey, winner, hey, winner, hey, winner, hey, winner. So the yeah. DJ at my first event that I did in 2017, he was like, let's put this song on. And we started the event with this song and we ended the event with this song. I love that. Right? Yeah. All, all I do is win, 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 no matter what. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, as people are rolling in the chat, type in the chat, like, who loves, like, Greg's positivity? Type in Greg in the chat, you know, type in Greg in the chat. I just love, like, I've known you for years, and I love the positivity that you actually bring and the energy they actually bring, you know. It's, it's just, like, awesome, incredible, right? So, you know, this is the thing. You know, people say I'm positive. And I really just believe that I'm aware. I'm aware. Somebody said to me, Greg, you're so positive, dude. How are you positive? I was like, I'm aware. I'm aware of my situation. I don't know if I'm that positive. I'm aware. I'm aware that right now I'm a licensed physical therapist. I'm yes. aware that not only am I, uh, am I a licensed physical therapist, I'm able to, um, to be a practice owner. So I can help double, triple, quadruple the amount of people that a typical staff PT can help. I'm aware that I have access to so many resources, books, podcasts, mentors. I have access to so many things that I never had access to when I opened up my clinic in 2005, Rick. Yes. Like I'm, I'm just aware. I, I'm aware of how good I have it. I'm aware of even though we're kind of hopefully at the tail end of this pandemic, like I'm aware that I made it. Like we made it through it. We and, did. And, yeah. And we not only made it through it, but we're coming out of this thing better than ever. And so I'm just aware that a lot of businesses didn't make it through it, man. A lot of people. You, you, you know, people did it. And so, and so I'm just aware. And yeah. because I'm aware of my situation, I'm just like, really, I don't have anything to lose, man. <laughs> you know, that's really it. Feel good. Feel good about everything. All right. I love that. Hey, everyone, like I, I want everyone, um, I want everyone in the chat to participate. Um, and also there's, there's a drop down that says, uh, uh, change it to all panels and attendees so we can see everyone um, who uh, to go see everyone chat in there and so um, and so type in the chat like type in the chat on a scale of 10 um, like uh, on a scale of 10 how excited are you for today's chat and everyone that actually typed in the chat I'm actually going to give out an eye watch at the end of today's session okay so I'm going to drive some conversations so if you want to win an eye watch give me a scale of 10 we're going to put you on the draw to win an eye watch okay you can choose Dude, I'm black. putting it in baby I'm putting it in I want that watch I just put it in shoot I'm putting it again 10 baby I'm, I'm excited to be everyone okay so you know let change it to all parents attendees and so this way we could get started right you know so all right cool cool Okay, that's a good way to start it, right, Greg? Give it an eye watch. Yeah, man, that's it, man. Give my eye watch. Shoot, I put it. I got two entries in. I got two entries in, man. And if I if I win that eye watch, I ain't giving it back. I'm, I'm taking it <laughs> because I got one here. I like. I want to be one of those dudes that has two two Apple watches on. Yeah. You know, one on this side, one on that side, just in case. You know, just in case I do that. So. That's 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 awesome, man. That's great. You are you are uh, you are amazing. Okay, so um, we're gonna get started. So everyone, I just want to just go quickly want to talk about so the people who don't know me. I'm Rick Lau, and I'm on a mission to help as many clinic owners as possible to get more new patients. And I get the luxury of meeting amazing like coaches, like experts, you know, and 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 influencers in this community where like I get to learn and deconstruct like what they're doing and share with our community. And so I'm so pumped 
to actually be um, to have Greg on here. And just before we dive into Greg's story and what he's going to teach us today about community marketing, is that I want to do a shout out to our community partner. So our community partner is like uh, the Canadian, the CPA Private Practice Division. So type in uh, PPD uh, in the chat, everyone. Type in PPD chat if you're a member of the Canadian Physiotherapy Association and they're type in the chat. I want to give them like lots of love. Um, to uh, uh, they've been a partner supporting uh, this event uh, and these webinars. So I just want to do a shout out to all the, uh, yeah, to all the members. And Karim has done an amazing job to lead you all, right? So yes, Karim, high five. Greg, you would love Karim. Karim matches your energy, okay? And he's the chair of the private practice division, which is the same thing as uh, your private practice section in, in the US, right? So Karim, reach out to me, DM me on Instagram. I want to be your friend. <laughs> yeah. Cool, cool. And so, and we have a special guest here. And, uh, and before he does his introductions, I just want to say that I've, I've, uh, I've followed Greg for many years, and I finally got to meet him actually in Nashville, which was two years ago, Greg. I don't know if you remember, right? I remember, I remember. Yeah, we were at, uh, we were at like one of like the best like marketing conferences in the world. It was by Russell Brunson, um, uh, one of the guys I kind of look up to. And, and, uh, and then it, at this like conference, I saw Greg. I was like, oh my God, I got to take a picture of this. Guy. I got to talk to him. I love what he's doing for the profession. And so this is kind of like my, my memory of you and me, Greg, you know, the first time we kind of met, right? Yeah, that was at the bar. I remember. I remember. <laughs> Thank you, don't I? <laughs> so, um, and once again, Greg, why don't, you, why don't you share us like your story? Like, like you do a lot of amazing stuff. You own clinics. You also like mentor and coach like a lot of like, you know, like healthcare practitioners in the U.S. So maybe you could share us with like a bit of your story, Greg. Yeah. So uh, I, I've been a physical therapist since 2000. Uh, and, and I started as a staff PT for the first three and a half years. And I, I, I realized very fast into my career that there were certain things that I was not going to be able to get, um, just being at the staff PT level. Um, and at that time in 2003 and 2004, I was actually working on the WTA, uh, the WTA and ATP uh, tennis tour. So I don't know if you know that, Rick, but I was working with professional tennis players. I was working oh. with them. I was going on the tennis circuit most of the time in just the U.S. I wasn't really going abroad too much because, you know, we had a, we had a young baby and all that other stuff. But basically, I was just like, okay, there's a certain way that I want to treat people. There's a certain way I want to treat patients. Um, there are certain restrictions that I have working for somebody else. And even though I, I vowed to myself that I'd never be a business owner. Uh, I decided in late 2004, early 2005 to just go after it and, um, and, and go after being a practice owner. So I did that, uh, teamed up with a guy named Mike. We had Renewal Rehab. And, um, and today we have three clinics. We're actually gonna open up our fourth uh, at the fourth quarter of this year. Uh, wow. And, wow. And, so, and so that kind of led me to 2000. And 15, where I had staff, I was like, Greg, the energy, the environment that we have at this place is amazing. There's two staff members that I had that were actually in DPT programs. And those staff members, uh, Julie and Chantel said, Greg, why don't you, um, like, why can't you do trainings and have people come in here and learn from you? I'm like, yeah, just tell any of your classmates that are kind of depressed on the profession, just come on in here. They're like, no, 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 Greg, 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 Greg do this, do a video. I was like, how do we want to do a video? They're like, here. And Chantel had just gotten the new iPhone. I think it was like the iPhone seven or something like that or six or something like that time. And so she brought out her iPhone and she says, all right, tell people if they should become a physical therapist. Boop. And she started, I was like, all right. So I'm sitting right there in my gym area of my clinic. I'm like, all right, hey, what's up y'all? My name is Greg Todd. Uh, should you become a physical therapist? Well, this is what it's like, da, 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 da. And that video got 10 views, 15 views, 20 views, 50 views, 100 views. Today, that video has over 300,000 views. Really? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And wow. that's how this all started. That's how it all started. So people started to ask more questions, more questions, more questions, more questions. Okay, now let's fast forward to now. Today, I have helped brand new 
physical therapists, 20 year physical therapists, 25 year PTs, OTs, registered dietitians. I've helped over 1000 people start their first business, whether it wow. is brick and mortar, whether it is online. And that has kind of been what I have done for the last four and a half, five years. And it started from that, that first video. So, um, so yeah, it's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing. Wow. That's awesome. Awesome. So that's, that's, that's a great story, you know, like you've helped over a thousand people. And so, um, you know, so you got your four clinics, you know, um, what would you like, what would you say, like, um, like, you know, like, uh, what would you say, like, what would you say are like, uh, what's helped you the most in terms of getting new patients when it comes to like setting up clinics, you know, because, you know, like, I think that's a fear a lot of people have when they start up, like a, a brick and mortar clinic is like, okay, yeah. right. It's not just about opening the door. Like, what are things that you've seen that kind of worked you, helped with you with your journey when you launch a like new clinic, you know? Yeah, I mean, so here, and I want to just say this first to everyone. Um, over the last five years of me helping healthcare professionals, you know, grow their business, like elevate their career. Uh, I actually, so I have a business partner and I took my eyes off my clinics. Like my business partner was running a lot of it. And wow. I have other businesses as well. I have a virtual staffing agency in the Philippines. Um, you know, I have an online fitness, you know, platform. So I've got lots of things going on. And I got to be honest with you, COVID like really opened my eyes to things. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like coming out of this, especially during the lockdown, this and that. And, you know, we had to shut down a couple of our clinics. I was like, wait a minute. Like, I need to have my hands back in this. So there are things that I did in 2005, Rick, that I um, used to be able to help to build the clinics back then. And then there are things that I recently have done. And those things are a little bit different than what I did in 2005. So, so I'll just tell you a couple of things that I kind of figured out between 2005 and 2020. And then I'm going to tell you all some things that I did over the last six months to be able to get my clinics back to normal. Is that cool? Okay. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so one of the biggest things I would say that, that, that people need to do that have practices is you need to create um, a list and the list needs to be, or, or I call it the big 45. This is what I train my clients to do. And the big 45 is broken down into three categories. Okay. I break it down into fellow providers, my community, and local businesses, okay? And, and, and you've got to treat them totally different, okay? So the big 45 is let's create 45 key relationships within the community, 15 there, local businesses, 15 there, and then providers, providers that we can provide value to and they could potentially provide value to us. Who has our customers? Mm. What, like, like, what is your customer? Is your customer a 48-year-old female who is trying to get back in shape and wants to do it through CrossFit or through running or through endurance athlete? Da, 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 da. Who is your customer and who has them? So, so, so like, is your, is, is your customer going to be the person that is, um, you know, going to be doing the new keto diet or the new paleo diet. Okay, well, local businesses that do paleo and keto, that's who I'm going after. Is your customer the person that that goes to, you know, whatever fitness area you guys have in Canada? Maybe it's like here, it's 24 hour fitness or it's anytime fitness. Like, like who is your customer? Where are they at? And those are the types of businesses that we go after. 15 of them, y'all, okay? 15 of them that we're trying to bring them into our world and we're trying to provide value to them first. And I'll talk about ways that we provide value. Okay, 15 community groups. So what does a community group look like? A community group could be uh, a local running group. It could be a local triathlete group. It could be a local um, track group for high school athletes. It could be a local group for, um, for those that do like online workout programs. It could be for those that do powerlifting. For the, uh, whatever your audience is, 
like you got to be able to go into those community groups or community events. Again, it's based on who your audience is because if you are going to win, you're going to have to immerse yourself into like wherever your community is at. And those people go to the same darn places over and over and over again. Okay. So that's- I love that. I love that. I love that. And just one thing, type in the chat, everyone, what is one community group that you actually have a relationship with? And type in that chat and maybe like, is it that running group? Is it that yoga studio? Type in the, type in the chat. I want to see what people are putting inside the community. Once again, everyone that types in the chat, you're going to be eligible for an eye watch. Okay. So I want this chat to be roaring. Give some uh, positivity and some energy to Greg and I. Okay. Okay. Greg. So, 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 so let's kind of talk about this. Sophia said, a running club. Okay. So, so Sophia, I take care of runners as well. For us, we have this group in Tampa. It's called the Blue Sharks, right? And the Blue Sharks starts in, um, in August. And basically in August, like we meet together collectively runners that are basically doing their long runs on a weekend together right? And everybody's training for a particular marathon. It might be Chicago Marathon. It might be uh, the New York City Marathon. It might be, um, you know, uh, the Marine Corps Marathon, just different uh, marathons and everybody's there. So what I did is I went to the group and I just immersed myself into the group. I didn't say to the group, hey, here's my card. I'm a physical therapist. You can come see me. I'm a physical. <laughs> da, da, da. No, immerse yourself in the group initially and just start to meet people. And then after I started to meet people, people just start talking. You start to find out what their problems are. And once you start to find out what their problems are, then you go to the head of the group and you say, hey, as you see, I've been around and you realize I'm not just coming here, whatever. but listen, I've been talking. To, I talked to Nancy. I talked to this one. I talked to Steve. I talked to that one. I talked to that one. And they're all struggling with plantar fasciitis or they're all struggling with Achilles problem. And the last thing we want is for these people to have this as a problem going into their big race. So with that said, is there anything that I can do because I'm a physical therapist and I treat this all day where I could speak to them about these problems and how they can avoid it? It's always a natural yes. But here's the deal. Dude, dude, but, but here's the deal. The deal is that you have to immerse yourself with the group first, which brings me to my first point that I think people screw up with when it comes to marketing. They want to get too much before they're willing to give too much. Yes, yes. Yeah, I agree. This is the whole, th this, you know, you know, you know, it's the same thing that Russell Brunson, you know, you got to show value before you sell. Most people like sell their product before showing value, right? You know, right? right so how right. It's, it's a really big thing. And so that's what I try to do. That's what I try to do with the community groups. Um, uh, that's what I would do if I was going to a CrossFit gym. And by the way, CrossFit was my audience as well. So hmm. instead of me going to a CrossFit box and saying, hey, I'm Greg Todd. I'm like the greatest physical therapist since sliced bread. Hey, can I come and talk? No, go to the box and immerse yourself in the box. I went three, four, five, six times. After I went to the box, I started doing workouts with them, this and that, sign up for a month, start doing workouts with them. P you're, guess what you're gonna find? People are hurt. And then this is what happened. One girl at the CrossFit box who actually was one of the CrossFit trainers was hurt. I said, just come to my clinic. She came to my clinic and she's like, you know what? I didn't know if you realize this, but I actually want to be a physio. Like, I want to be a physio. And I was like, you just come volunteer at my clinic. Her name is Labette. She ended up volunteering at my clinic. I treated her. She, I mean, she paid. I treated her. She volunteered at clinic. And then now she, as a trainer, who's well-respected and trusted at that CrossFit box, it was called CrossFit 14. She started telling people about me. Man, it, look, I ended up getting five, five to six new patients a month five to six new patients a month, just from her, just from that relationship. So I think that's the biggest thing that practice owners mess up with is they wanna do business. They want to 
provide value, but they don't want to immerse themselves in yeah. the community first. You've got to immerse yourself in the community first. It might be a five, six week lag, but once you do that, the ask is so easy. It is so, so great. Easy. So great. I'm going to put my practice owner on hat. Like mm -hmm. I'm running a business. I actually don't have a lot of time. And you know, now that I'm like homeschooling my kids too, you know, like with all, like remote learning, yeah. like, like how do I, how do I like, how would I immerse myself with 45 of these different like groups that you talked about, you know? You, right? I mean, you don't have to, you know, I, I, I mean, I could give examples for every single one. You, you got to find one. And I'm not even, and, and by the way, it's never been easier. Why? Because we have lots of restrictions. So hmm. the truth of the matter is that there are a lot of CrossFit boxes right now that are doing, that are still doing their workouts primarily from home. So, so, so to be honest with you, the amount of time that I invested in a lot of these places prior to COVID, um, was not the same amount of time that I'm investing and in immersing myself in these places now. You don't have to do all of them. You just got to do one. That's it. Yeah. All, all it takes is one relationship that you're just going to slowly invest in over a period of time um, for it to give you four, five, six new clients a month. Yeah. I love that. And, and Sophia brings up a good point. And this is something that like I'm a big fan of is that like, is that like, you know, if you got 10 practitioners or you got five practitioners like at your clinic, I would make that like, you know, I would make that like everyone should choose one, right? right. You know, right. If everyone chooses the one, right? Then yeah. that's five, you know, and then, you know, maybe one per quarter, you know, and, right. and, and exactly, exactly. And, right. and that's what we do with our team. So, so somebody said practice owners are too busy to immerse themselves in 45 relationships. You're exactly right. You don't have to immerse yourself in 45 relationships, but this is what a lot of, as someone that coaches practice owners, this is what a lot of practice owners do. A lot of practice owners will say, hey, you know what? I'm going to reach out to two places. And those two places don't get back to them. And then you know what practice owners say? Oh, marketing doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, well, that's not how it works. What you have to do is you can create, you don't know who's going to respond back to you. You don't know who's going to say yes, who's going to say no. You don't know who's going to take you up on a Zoom call. You don't know who that's going to be. So what I do is I say, hey, look, all I need for pretty much every single one of you that are struggling right now with getting clients. And by the way, if that's you, can you say struggle bus in the comment section? If that's you, if you're struggling right now with getting clients, say struggle bus. All you need is about three relationships. Yes. That's all you need. Yeah. You don't need 50. You don't need 45. You need about three. And right now, if you had one provider, one community group, and one local business that started to feed you patients right now, you would be off the struggle bus. And you'd be on the cash count. <laughs> 100% you know right yeah that's it so how do you start do you go after one person in the community do you go after one local business do you go after one provider well no that's not how it works you have to go after I think at least starting at least have kind of like you know I've you know 10 to 15 that I'm going to at least start the process and then one or two are going to respond back you know that's really it I mean, that, yeah. I mean that's how it works. And you and once you get your magical three, um, you know, you're good to go. And then you cultivate other relationships, right? You cultivate yeah. other relationships and see, can we go from three to five? Can we go from three to six? Three to six, now you're busting out the seams. You gotta open up another clinic. And let's let's be honest, like Greg, you know, like I think like even if we look at like what we do in our businesses, like these relationships with you that you have with people in your community or people with influence, it takes years. Yeah. It might take quarters, right? It takes time to nurture. Like, look at even like my relationship with you. Like, you know, like it took me two, three years to actually jump on a webinar with you, right? right. You know, right. over all these years. And so I think everyone has to have that mindset where like, you know, like the nurturing these relationships, it takes time. But if you do it well, like, like you said, Greg, like you don't need 45. You just need like three, right? You only need three to five. That's really it. I mean, that's really it. Three, three will take all your problems that you all have right now with new patients. Three makes all your problems go away. Yeah. 
five puts you in a set of new problems. The new problems are I'm making so much money and I have such a line of patients that want to see me and I don't know what to do with them. Now, do you want those problems or not? You know what I mean? I don't like broke problems. I, like, I mean, I just don't like those problems. I don't like having money problems. I don't like having cash flow problems. I would rather have that problem than the problem of I'm at my clinic, they're charging me, I'm getting charged rent, I have to pay for my staff, and I don't have enough people to see them. I'd rather the former problems than the latter. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And so, so you know, um, uh, um, and so one thing I just want to reiterate, because back to this time thing, is that like, you know, you don't have to have, like, if you have the one relationship, you know, make your staff also develop one relationship each, you know, and so right. you can have like this, like this, this domino effect, you know, of like people in your team, if that makes sense, type in team in the chat. Type in team in the chat. This is about you, like working with your teams, um, whether it's clinical, whether it's your front desk, everyone actually has like a relationship that they can nurture over a quarter and make that part of your core lead goals. And everyone has the one about nurturing you. And if everyone immerses that, it's, 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 it's one of them is going to fly, you know, right. right? It's going to fly. It's going to fly. Here, here, and here. Do you want to give you another, another tip that you can do as well? Um, for some people like, oh my gosh, like how hard is that going to be? to be able to like nurture a relationship. I, as a, as a coach and, and the way Rick and I met is we met in an event, right? And that was a live event three years ago, right? Okay. So one of the things that I do is I'm involved in like many masterminds. So I don't know how many of you have been in a mastermind, but basically a mastermind is when you bring people that are like-minded that are having problems in their businesses and you all share your different problems that you're having in the business. And as you share your problem, other people chime in on ways that they believe your problem can be solved. It's, it's amazing. Okay. It's amazing. So guess what I did when I started going to these things like six years ago. Right. And now I go to them virtually. You know what I did? I started creating masterminds in my community. Hmm. You want to know the fastest way you want to know here's here here's the way an hour to an hour and a half of your time where you can just say look i'm inviting and by the way today you just do it through a zoom just say on wednesday wednesday may 21st or whatever um i'm inviting local business owners to come together and as we are now coming out of the pandemic and we're getting ready in the next maybe two months, three months, whatever, to totally, to fully open up. Let's talk about what our plans are going to be to be able to get our business back to full capacity. Do you know how many people would be interested in that? I would sign up. I would sign up. <laughs> exactly. 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 And what we're doing is we're just going to take one business from every single industry. Okay. Just going to mm -hmm. take one from every single industry. So if you're in healthcare, Cool, you're a physical, you know, you have a physio practice. Okay, you got a, chi a chiro over here. Okay, cool. You got this one. Okay, cool. You're internal med. Okay, you're an orthopedic surgeon. Okay, you're this, you're that, da, 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 da. We're just taking one person from every business and we're going to cap it off. So if you want to sign up, great. Now, here's what you did. I was the creator. Even though I'm not the one talking throughout the networking event or the mastermind, I brought the value because I got everybody to come together. Yes. Wow. That, that's that's a, how it works. Yeah. But, okay, type up, if you like this idea that uh, Greg just shared, type in mastermind in the chat, you know, type in mastermind in the chat. This is about building a mastermind of like local businesses. In essence, you're forming your, like your 45 anyways, right? Doing this, yeah. this is actually forming your 45, right? And you're doing it one time. You're doing it one time. That's it. It's, it's so simple. It is so simple to do. All yeah. you need is if you're going to do it live, you need your clinic. If you're not going to do it live, you just need a Zoom link. I mean, like, that's it. Like, it's so simple, right? Well, Greg, let's unpack this. So, okay, I, I, I could see it, do it, like, in person. Like, that's, like, the best. Like, relationships that happens, like, in person. But how would you do this? like on a zoom call, right? When there's like, let's just say there's 10 or 15 different like business owners in there, right? Yeah. Yeah. So if you're the one that sets it up, right. Okay. So let's say Rick sets it up in Canada. All right, cool. 
So, so what I would do is, is as the host, is I'm going to say, okay, listen, what I want to do before we actually get started is I'm going to actually introduce each person. Okay. I'm going to introduce everybody that's on the call. So I would like reach out to businesses and say, Hey, listen, um, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do this, uh, on Wednesday, May 21st. Um, this is what you're going to get from this. We're going to be able to, uh, work on our plan on what we're going to do to open up when we open up at 100%, you know, you know, capacity. And also there might be businesses as you hear about the different businesses that we're bringing together on this. Um, there might be businesses that you want to actually do some partnerships, some self-promotion with uh, in order to have your 100% open up strategy, uh, you know, meet whatever your, your uh, goals are. Okay, cool. So then now, you get people, remember, people will come to anything, whether it's virtual, whether it's in-person, as long as it is giving them the outcome that they desire. Who does not want to open up to 100% capacity when we get back to 100% opening? Everybody does, right? Okay, so now the people are there. So here's what I would do if I'm Rick or Greg time. So what I'm doing is I am, let's say I have 10 people. I'm personally introducing every single person. Why? Because I know one of the ways to get value is by talking good about people. So let's just say, I say, hey, all right. Um, thank you all for joining me. I'm Greg Todd. I am actually the co-owner of Renewal Rehab. And listen, all we wanted to do is bring together businesses because we all want to be able to be at 100% capacity within four weeks of us opening up fully. So what I did is I re reached out to some of the businesses in our area that have the greatest reputation and that's what's in this room. So go ahead and smile, everybody. Wonderful. So glad you all are here. So what I would just like to do is do a quick little, um, just one minute introduction of everyone. And then after that, we're just going to go around the room. We're going to talk about our biggest strengths for our business or your, your, your one minute pitch, which is what you do for people, what you foresee as a problem with opening up and um, what plans you have on opening up. So let me talk about Rick first. So Rick is actually the creator of Call Hero. Rick and I met at da 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 da. This guy's absolutely amazing. He's helped so he's helped hundreds, if not thousands, of practice owners with being able to improve their conversions. This that da 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 da. Now Rick, look, you're already smirking a little bit. You're kind of laughing, right? You feel good. That's right. I love you. Doing it. That's that's value. That's value. Okay, I'm going to the next person, next person, next person. That might be the last time that I talk. Mm -hmm. And you know something? Within 10 minutes, everybody's like, wow, thank you so much, Greg Todd, for bringing us all together. Thank you so much for gassing up my business. Thank you so much for basically giving me a pre-frame before I actually speak and making people know that I'm a reputable person. So at that point, I've just created maybe 10 to 15 people in my big 45 by about three minutes of talking. Wow. Oh, I love that. I love that. And then, and then, and then after that, what happens after like, like everyone just leaves? No. So then now, so then now at the end, right, everybody's talked. I'm assuming everybody's going to get massive value from it. I've never been in a mastermind where there has been massive value. One takeaway that I heard or this or that, whatever, you just limit it to about five to 10 minutes for each person to, talk and then to get back, you know, feedback. And then we move on to the next person, next person, next person. And then at the end of it, we say, hey, did you guys find value in this? Did you guys love this? Do you guys want to try to do this again next month? Mm, love it. Love oh it. my God, oh my God, I want to do this. And then you know what ends up happening? Other people say, oh my gosh, I told my buddy over here, he owns the tire shop. I turned this one over here, blah, 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 blah. And then guess what? You can create another group. Yeah. You can another group. Yeah. I love, I love it. it. That's it. it. Yeah, no, that's, that's a great, um, Hey, let, let's give a tip in Greg in the chat. Like this was like an amazing gem he just shared with everyone. And I'm just like super like, uh, yeah, appreciative for him to type Greg in the chat. If, if you love this and you're going to implement this at, at, at your clinic, you know, so. Me, you know, thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. You guys, this is a thing. It's like, there's, there's so many ways for you to do this, but you have to understand like, here, like, here's a big thing I want you all to understand. That that I just gave you was a tactic, okay? All right? Now, the strategy, so tactics are actually the lowest level 
of execution. Okay. All right. I gave you a tactic. If you want, we can talk about Facebook ads. You want, we can talk about Google. Okay. You want, we can talk about, you know, this, or, okay. Those are all tactics, right? And we, and we have tactics all day. Okay. The big thing, the next level, like beyond taxes is strategy. Okay. It's like, like what, like, why are you doing this? And when are you going to do it? Okay. Now, does this make sense to do after we've opened up to 100%? No. Makes sense to do now. In preparation. That's strategy. It's when are we going to do it? And why are we doing this? So that people can be like, wow, I'm going to do this because this is what it's going to do for me. Okay. Mm. That's strategy. Yeah. Okay. But there's another level beyond strategy. And that's called principles. Every single principle that I will talk about with you all, principles are laws. Laws don't change. Gravity works. I got my hat. Woo! It worked. That's called gravity. It's a law. It doesn't change. So the law that I have used to build multi-million dollar businesses in different industries is a law of sowing and reaping. That law doesn't change. It doesn't change. Rick got me on this webinar. Why? Because he actually follows that principle of sowing and reaping. This guy, I have my, my Instagram stories. I'm out there grinding. Uh, uh, uh. Rick is one of my big fans. And because of that, I became one of his big fans. When I saw Rick's Academy Award winning performance the other day with that movie thing that he did and he was like strapped up to a chair, I'm like, bro, you're the man, right? Okay, you guys, you guys, this is called sowing and reaping. So if you want to know how, like every strategy that I'm going to give you is based off a principle, sowing and reaping works. It works. Yeah. <laughs> All you, 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 you put seeds and you throw a little water on it and you do that over and over and over again and it doesn't necessarily blossom tomorrow but over time you're going to reap a harvest but you mm. don't reap it without sowing first that's a principle that principle never changes mm. amen the strategy man. might change the tactics might change we're not going to be talking about doing Zoom masterminds next year. So if you say, oh my gosh, I listened to Greg Todd. Now you're listening in 2022. I listened to him. He said, do Zoom masterminds. It doesn't work. <laughs> well, guess what? We're opened up again, bro. Okay. We're open up. We don't need to do that anymore. We're going to do something different. Tactics will change. Strategy rarely does, but sometimes strategy changes depending on what's going on. But principles don't change. Mm. Yeah, I love that. They don't change. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Yeah, one hundred percent. You know that was that was powerful. You know, so um, yeah, no, no. So so so, Greg. Um, you know, one thing I'm thinking about is that, like, like you know, right now when I look at the community, there's some clinics that have an abundance of like new patients, right? You know, like they just right. they got tons, and then. On the flip side, there's some people that are really like struggling, you know, right? It just depends on like, you know, like whether they've had these seeds sowed over the years or, or whether, whether like, um, you know, or maybe like in the wrong location, you know? And so I see a lot of people running to like online marketing, you know, right? Um, right. Like it's an easy way out, you know? Yep. Um, I'm spending a bull of this time and money on like Google ads, Facebook ads, or these agencies. And then, and then, but they're not putting that same attention on the community marketing side. Right. You know? Yeah. So Greg, like I've like, like, like what would you share like as your experience and uh, advice to people who are kind of like um, looking at like, you know, I want to jumpstart my new patients and the easiest way to do it is like go online. Right. Which is very competitive right now as well. Right. So, cause everyone's doing it. Right. I mean, the, the, the best way to jumpstart, if you, if you are here, can you, you all do me a favor? Let me know if you are a startup or you're an existing. And, and when I say startup, I'm saying you're in your first year, okay? Or are you an existing practice owner, meaning that you've been in this game for, uh, for more than a year? Okay, so it looks like we have 
mostly existing people. Okay, so let's let's talk to both groups right now. Okay, um, if you're existing, the greatest way for you to improve your uh, uh, the amount of new patients that are coming into your clinics right now is to go to the people that have already paid you money. I mean, if everyone has people's contact information, the first thing that I would be doing is I would be doing reactivation campaigns to my audience that has paid me money. Let me tell you something. It's very much like Apple. Now, how many people have iPhones? Okay. <laughs> how, how, how many people have Android devices? I'm an Android guy, man. I'm an Android okay. guy. Okay. All right. So here's the deal. Either you're a team Apple or you're a team Android. Either way, here's what happens. Many of you that are team Apple, it doesn't matter what Apple puts out at this point. You're going to buy it. Like when I look at my email and I look at charts, $29.99, iTunes, $39.99, iTunes, $9.99, iTunes. I, man, I don't even check it. I don't even check it. Because I'm already a customer. And once I'm a customer, it's very easy for me to repeat my buying behavior with you. So for those of you that are like, I need patience, I need them fast. If you're existing and you have a customer base, go to them first. Start with them. Here's what you do. Send them an email. Send them a text message. Again, that's tactics. Right now, text is more powerful than email. Okay. So what you do is you say, hey, this is the team over at Blank Clinic. I'm just checking up on you and want to make sure you're, you're uh, doing well. I just want to check on you and make sure you're doing well. Is there anything you need from us? Now, here's the deal. If you do that, if you do that, people are going to respond. I'm not saying everybody will respond, but people, are, especially through text, usually we get anywhere between a 50 to a 75% response in text. We get about a 95% open rate in text, okay? Email, a little bit different. More of like probably 10 to 15% respond, probably like 30, 35% open. Okay, fine. So here's the deal. And, and by the way, they will open if they paid you money. If they haven't paid you money, they don't open, okay? So the best thing you could do is go to your existing audience and just ask that. That's it. Now, when they respond, guess what you need to do? Right back. <laughs> what do you write back with? What do you write back with? <laughs> I'm doing great. How are you? Have somebody there. I don't do it, but my staff will do it. My front desk will do it. Remember, you ain't got no patience. So you're paying them. They ain't doing anything anyways. <laughs> okay. I mean, you might as well have them respond back. So like, like, like that's it. Yeah. You know, you say like, so somebody said, have a scripts, you know, you know, flow uh, a chart that, that does work, but, and, 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 and you can make it very simple, very simple. Like I'm doing great or I'm doing sucky. Okay. Like that's pretty much what people will say, right? Oh, you're doing great. Awesome. Well, listen. If there's anything that you need from us, blah, 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 blah. We're here. Okay. I'm doing sucky. Hey, why are you doing sucky? Is there something wrong? Are you hurt? This is, okay. And then you just start talking. Every single time we do a reactivation campaign through my three clinics, we get anywhere between eight to 12 new patients. Why? Because it's easy. Why? Because they've already paid us money. Why is that so important? Because the hardest thing in business is to get trust. 100%. So it's the hardest thing. It's the reason why people don't pay you. They want to pay you, but they just don't trust you yet. Okay. So now okay. let's talk to the startups. Okay. I'm sorry. Just to start with the startup for that specific scenario, like you know, do you do you find it more effective uh, for a front desk to be texting, yeah. or is it the practitioner? No, front no front desk. Front desk. Oh, this, this is a debate that we have in their community. You no, should be the no, 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 no. The front desk. I, I want to hear you why. I want to hear your. Well, number one is um, they're at a different level of value. It is just a response. We are not there to give them counsel on a prior injury. That's not what we're doing. What we're doing is we're there to check up on them. Here's what I know. 
by just checking up on people, I've already separated myself from every single physical therapy clinic that's my competitor. Who's doing that? Because most physical therapy clinics don't believe in the principles that I believe in, the laws of sowing and reaping. So who's doing that? If they're not paying, they're not playing with them. I have been in business for 16 years. And the reason why we've stayed in business and thrive is because we believe in those principles. Those principles work for us. So whether you're paying me or not paying me, we're going to check in on you. Now, some of those people, that, now this is what I know. Okay, this is what I know. I know this, Rick. In December of last year, I bought myself a new car. Okay? But I, I actually ordered the car in November. So I ordered a Tesla. And prior to November, I had never driven a Tesla. But when I went to test drive a Tesla, and then I decided to order one like the next day, all of a sudden I saw Teslas everywhere. I'm like, where the hell were these cars before? I saw them. Why? Because they were front of mind. So I know with the reactivation campaign, even if you say, I don't really need your services right now, but I thank you for checking in on me. I know that at that moment and within the next 24 hours, I'm front of mind. Mm. So if that person now goes, I don't know, they're talking to their friend and friend says, gosh, man, my back is hurting the heck out of me. I'm front of mind. You know what? Oh, I actually have, you know, um, a team that I used to see at Renewal Rehab. Oh, those people are amazing. So you all have to just understand this is called the, this is from the principles of sowing and reaping. Like that's how it works. Right. So my front desk can do that. They, like, just give them the scripts. That's it. Just give them the script. And then they can respond. And, 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 and that's it. Now, what I do is during, and I don't do reactivation campaigns every week. We do it once a quarter. That's it. Once a quarter, we do it. And during that time, we make sure that there's about a four hour block that whoever's at the front desk, whatever, that they can respond, that they're not totally busy, da, 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 this and that. And then they respond to those emails via the script. And that's it. Wow. That's awesome. That is great. That's great. Type in gold in the chat. If, if you love, if you love uh, Greg's experience, type in gold in the chat. That was, uh, that was some awesome knowledge ball, you know? So, all right. Startups, Greg, you know, startups. Okay. So, so if you, if you are a startup, there are certain things that you need to do um, to create a culture. Startups, you need to create a culture, okay? Now, I'm assuming my startups, you got one patient, you got two patients, you got three patients, but you don't have a lot. So what do you do? Well, I mean, yes, you can do, um, you know, community workshops. You can do some of the things that we talked about before. But one of the things that you can do as a startup, and you look at all the startups that make it, is they create a culture, so I want to give you all some examples of like how we try to create a culture in renewal rehab. Um, you got your first, first, second, third, fourth, fifth patient in. Do you have a patient of the month? Do you have a patient of the month? Here's what I do. If you only have one patient right now. You got to make them your patient of the month. <laughs> and you've got to Ask that person, would you like, hey, let's just say it's Susie. Susie, I want to tell you that um, you've made history. You are not only our first patient, um, you're the first person that trusted us with um, our services. And we actually want to make you patient of the month. Here's what I do with patient of the month. Patient of the month, we take a picture of them. Okay. They can have on a shirt like this, make physical therapy happy again. They can have on a renewal rehab called team renewal shirt. Take a picture with uh, patient of the month. Patient of the month, if you don't have an email list, patient of the month is going to go onto your social media accounts. Obviously with their permission, get their permission first. And you are going to do a story on patient of the month. Okay. You can do a story on patient of the month. Now, here's what I know. When I do a story on somebody and I say great things about that person, what do you think that person's gonna do? You think they're gonna hide that? No, that person's gonna share it out. When people talk great about me, the first thing I do is, you know, let me share this bad boy out. Mm -hmm. Yep, let me, let me, yeah, <laughs> right? So that's it, right? So, so, so again, 
um, you don't have to talk about their condition. You don't have to talk about anything, but you can just say, look, um, and, and you get you get their approval. We just have them sign a waiver and, and that's it. And we have our patient in a month. Here's another thing that we do at our clinic. We actually have a scrapbook. This is actually in our waiting room. It's a renewal rehab scrapbook. And the scrapbook is for patients that want to give their story of their experience at renewal rehab. So when new people come in, the scrapbook is actually right there. It's right there in the waiting room. And they start to look through and they start to see all the stories, all the testimonials, all the this, all the that. And it gets those people to buy in without them even meeting us yet. They've bought in before, like they've even had interaction with a therapist. So startups, here's the deal. You're gonna to have to create a big 45. You're gonna to have to create relationships. But when you bring people in, this is where most start, they don't take these people and turn them into rock stars. Those yes. people, the first 10 to 50 people that you bring in, if they aren't repeat customers, I can tell you right now, there's a high probability you're not gonna last. Not gonna make it. Not You're gonna not gonna make it. make it. You're not gonna make it. I mean, that's it. Like when I go back and I look, and and Rick, I'm sure you can see this with all the practice owners that you have worked with, all the yeah. practice owners I've consulted with. If your first 10 to 50 clients, if less than 10% of them are repeat or not repeat, and they're not telling other people about you, that means you have not created a culture that's actually creating virality in your community. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and honestly, like, yeah, like, that's a good point. And we, we talk about this in our community all the time is that, you know, there's a reason why like you're seeing self-discharges happen in your clinic. You know, there's a reason why these patients are not following your plan of care or whether even using a plan of care. Right. So right. I think everything you talk about is like bang on Greg, you know, that, that everyone is, uh, is, uh, is, is doing right. So Cool. Wow. That was, uh, that was awesome. Uh, type in the chat, you know, what is your biggest takeaway from so far from Greg? Type that in the chat, you know, type that in the chat. What is your biggest takeaway? And, and Greg, what do you think my biggest takeaway is from, from uh, our episode right now so far? How amazing you are. <laughs> <laughs> right. I said how amazing Rick is. Rick's like, geez, I mean, this guy, this guy's gold, man. Of course I'm amazing. And this is awesome. I'm so, I'm, you know what, like, this is, I, I love your energy. And my biggest takeaway, honestly, is the way you are able to, um, uh, I love your like list of your 45, you know, and how you break that into the three groups, you know, right. and you find it's a very cool. way, you know, and, and honestly, like, you know, everyone's like running to like new school marketing, new school market, online marketing. Honestly, I think the heart of the business, if you look at majority of the practices that, you know, I work with a lot of like two, $3 million practice owners, those ones were actually built on community marketing clinics. It wasn't off like a gimmicky, like Google ads campaign, a gimmicky Facebook campaign. It was actually through the relationships they have with like the community, you know, and it's like the stuff you talk about. And I think sometimes, you know, sometimes we fail to realize the basics of like what makes practices like succeed, you know, and, and it is the community side that, that we lack, you know, and there's no silver bullet, right? I mean, come on, y'all. Let's come on. Let, let's. All right, let's use some logic right now, okay? Physiotherapy is is hard, okay? It like 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 it's hard for a lot of people. And you want them to come back and you want them to be able to execute out the treatment plan that you have professionally prescribed for them. You've got to create an experience out of it. I mean th I mean this is like this is not just logic but this is how we get people results. We get people results by people actually doing the things that we prescribe for them in their plan of care. And we know that for the majority of people, um, if, if we're competent, which I'm assuming everybody on this, this call is you know, uh, you know, quite you know, competent, if we get them to execute out their plan of care, there's like an 80 to 90% chance that they're gonna get pretty good outcomes. So how are you gonna do that if you don't have a great culture? If they don't feel like they are so special when they enter your facility, if they don't feel like, if they actually do get really good results, that you're gonna keep it quiet. 
They want you to showcase them. Whether they say, they're never gonna tell you that, but that's what they want. That's what they want. If you want your marketing costs to go down, treat your people good. If you oh, want cost per lead to go down, take care of your patients. That's pretty simple, right? It makes everything simpler. You want to know what the fastest way, if I'm doing a Facebook ad, or, or especially a Facebook ad, right? If I'm doing a Facebook ad, you want to know what makes things pop for us? It's that we get interactions on the ad. You want to know who usually gives us interactions? It's our old clients. It's clients that used to come there. Like, oh man, I remember when I used to go to them. Oh man, this guy's are awesome, man. Oh man, I miss those days, whatever. Guess what? That brings our cost per lead down. That brings our cost per click down. So look, it comes back to just take sowing and reaping, sowing and reaping, right? It comes back to the principle. It doesn't change. Yes, love it. Love it. That's awesome. Hey, Greg, we're just going to wrap up. Uh, before I give out the iWash, so everyone sticks around. Um, Greg, how do people find out more about you? And I think you're running this amazing event, you know, um, that's virtual, also in person. Like, may yes. maybe talk about that, right? So, yes, yes. So, um, so I'm going to be hosting an event uh, one month from today. One month from today. And this event is for healthcare professionals, it's for entrepreneurs, it's for students. It is basically a two-day event that I take people from confused to clear on their path, from only trading time for money in the clinic to multiple streams of income, uh, to not having any skills and strategies on how to uh, network and create massive uh, volume in your practices and become oversubscribed. And when I say oversubscribed, that means that you have more people than you have spots for them. And when you can do that, you can raise your rates, you can open up clinics, you can take off time, and you can have financial freedom, and you can have time freedom. Today, I make multi seven figures. I have multiple businesses and I do all of it part-time. I do it on 20 hours a week. And the only reason why I'm able to do that is because of the strategies, the principles and the tactics that I put into play. And I don't know the any other place that I can do this within two days to help people through all the pain that I've gone through over the last 16 years but SSHC, smart success for healthcare. Not dumb success, folks, smart success for healthcare professionals. This is the first year that I'm actually not just doing it live, I'm doing it virtually because I want everyone to be able to come. And I know that some people are in places where they're not able to travel. So if you buy a ticket now, you have an option where you're gonna sign up for live or for virtual, and it's gonna be pretty epic. Rick saw yeah. some of the things I have behind the scenes to make this the greatest virtual event yeah, this, is, this is awesome man you know i i, I want to go to it <laughs> man listen i'm trying to dig y'all a tunnel um yeah. out of canada and then get y'all some some way to get to new york and then take a, then take a flight i'm trying i'm trying i'm trying to build a tunnel but i don't know I'm, yeah. I'm working on it let me see what i can do but if i can't do that then just sign up virtually and get to the event yeah. we've done this event this will be the fourth time we've done it first year we had 70 second year we had 200 um, yeah. the third year we had 500 plus that signed yeah. up and then now with COVID, you know, everything's kind of messed up, but I'm going for it because healthcare, you guys are struggling because you guys have not been networked. You haven't been partnering with people. You guys need an event. And so whether you can attend live or you can attend virtual, I'd say sign up sshclive.com sign up right now. Yeah, I love that, everyone. And so I put that in the chat. You could go sign up. I also sent a follow up email, everyone, so then you could actually like learn more from uh, from Greg. And honestly, I'm gonna vouch for it. like the the speakers that he has on here. Like they're actually like amazing. Um, and so you're gonna learn a boatload, you know, and uh, and uh, and it's it's gonna be like amazing, right? So right, I highly recommend everyone to attend. Um, once again, you're going to get a follow-up email on that. And uh, let's give like a high five to Greg. That was amazing. Type in high five in the chat. Um, that was amazing, Greg. Like you crushed it like you normally do. And I'm just super grateful for you sharing like kind of your gems 
Um, and also this adventure community. I think that a lot of people could actually like, you know, learn from, learn from you and cool, dude, that was amazing. Right. So once again, everyone super grateful for Greg being in here, like massive gems. Um, uh, we're going to, we're going to send a replay so everyone can watch it again. And so Greg, Thank you, and uh, and I can't wait to hang out with you again in Florida someday, man. You know, yeah, soon. Man. Yeah, man. It's gonna be right. soon. It's gonna be soon. It's gonna be soon. Soon, soon. Let's take that. Okay. Yeah, man. Awesome. That's right. I will. Okay. All right, man. Okay. Later. Okay. Take care. Bye, Bye everybody.